you get the kids dressed. <laughs> I know, I'm dressed. <laughs> not so much at home yet. <laughs> oh, well. I woke up at, well, I don't know, I think it was 5.30. I don't know why I've been waking up so early. Because I, you're not used to it. I'm not an early bird person. No, I'm, I'm not either. I go to bed real late, so that's why. It's because I do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think the weight going off of me, too. Well, there is a... There is that different light down there, but to plug it in would be... I had it on when I turned it on. I, I just I ran past it so quick. I don't know what happened. 
Good morning. morning. And welcome to this wonderful, beautiful day that's above negative 90 for worship. Okay. Um, You know, just, I I owe you all an apology. Because last Sunday, when you were voting, I just took off and left and forgot to dismiss you. And I didn't realize it till I got to Zion, and I'm like, oh, it's too late now, huh? So I'm sure you all sat here all week. (laughs) Okay, maybe not, but I'm so glad you can laugh with me, and I'm sure sometimes at me, which is okay, too. Um, Announcements this morning, there's a whole bunch in your um, bulletin. One is that tomorrow night we are uh, postponing our joint meeting at Lake Hanska um, just because possibility of weather. Um, But then on Tuesday, as of now, they're still going to have the Living Meadows annual meeting here at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, I'm sure they'll let you know if that changes too. Medelia Food Shelf has an open house on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday is our confirmation here at Faith, starting at 6. And then on Friday at 6 a.m., not 6 p.m., 6 a.m. is a pancake breakfast here at Faith, uh, sponsored by the FFA. Um, Next Sunday, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, One, yesterday, Pastor Janet Adams, who has been called to serve Trinity here in town, was ordained. Um, Next Sunday, she will be installed as their pastor. Um, Also, next Sunday, the 27th, is the Wantonwan Conference Assembly, which will be held at first in St. James, and that begins at 2. But then as you see in your um, bulletin, the family of Marge Hohenstein is celebrating her 100th birthday, which is next Sunday. Um, And that will be at the Legion here in town. Um, Talking to her daughter this last week, um, they're asking for no gifts, but if you feel so moved, you can make a donation. to to some place in her name and just let them know that you've done that. Um, I'm always amazed when somebody lives to be 100 years old or even 90 to 100. So many things have changed in our world and I just marvel when I talk to them. Um... There's also a, um, the junior, senior, after prom committee is asking for donations to help create a safe and successful prom for the juniors and seniors. If you would like to donate to that, you can leave um, money in the offering plate and we will make sure it gets there. Your Thrivent Choice dollars will need to be directed by March 31st. Um, also, there, uh, the, there's a benefit for Jovi Forstner. She is that little um, nine months old. She was diagnosed with neuroblastoma. And that is next Saturday um, from 3 till... I guess whenever it ends, they have a silent auction, and that is down at the Legion. Um, Moments Hospice will speak on hospice care on Thursday at 3 p.m. at um, Prairie View Good Samaritan in St. James, and they'd like you to RSVP if you would like to attend that. And then I think... My final announcement, unless somebody has something else, is that we do offer our deepest sympathies to the family of Virginia Pearson. 
She passed away Sunday, last Sunday, um, and we celebrated her life on Thursday. Um, so please continue to pray for the family. Are there any other announcements I might have missed? What does it mean to truly love? What does it mean to love unconditionally, even those who we are taught to hate? Let us center ourselves for worship. Please rise as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. We begin our service this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare... The, to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us be seated for our opening hymn. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. O oh Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O oh divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. after being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, Joseph reveals himself to them. Now the second in command in Egypt, Joseph reassures his brothers that God has used their evil intentions for good to preserve life during a devastating, devastating famine, and Joseph forgives them. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 45. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 37 responsively by whole verse. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine with the light. 
and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. In the Apostles' Creed, we speak of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Using a metaphor of a planted seed and the story of Adam, Paul preaches passionately about the mystery of following Christ's perfect life into eternity. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. 
your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's gospel was a continuation of the Beatitudes that we heard last week. And we talked about how blessed we are as people of God, how blessed we are to be claimed by God. Now for me, one of the first things I thought of as I was reading this gospel this week was about high school. You see, I was on the high school girl swim team. And we maybe had 12 of us. We weren't a big team. In fact, we probably lost more meets than we won just because we didn't have the numbers. And you think with that small of a group, we could bond, right? That we would support each other and just be a tight-knit group. Well, we weren't. In fact, we had at least two factions divided down the middle. Those of us who enjoy being on the team, doing what we needed to do, and then there were those that I I would deem um, more serious athletes. They would get upset with those of us who were there and doing our workout because as soon as the season was over, we were done. And they expected us to continue swimming the year round to improve. But anyway, I can remember it would have been my sophomore year between my sophomore and junior years, I, w I went to a youth camp as a counselor. And one of the things we talked about was similar to this gospel today. You know, treat others the way that you would like to be treated. Love those who hate you. Be kind to everyone. And that kind of got me thinking. So when we went back to school in the fall, let me tell you, nothing had changed. We still had the two factions. In fact, I think we were further apart than we ever had been. And one of the gals that wasn't very kind to me, and I will say I wasn't very kind to her, I started saying, hi, how are you doing, Christy? What a nice day it is, isn't it, Christy? And at first she didn't know what to say to me. And finally she said, what do you want? I said, nothing. And I'm sure for the rest of the season she wondered what I was up to. But what I learned from that is that even if we have differences, we can treat people with kindness and respect, right? Because isn't that the way that we would like to be treated? And I know I've brought up our world quite a bit lately. I, um, I'm almost to the point that I'm not sure I want to watch the news anymore. because I'm not sure that I see any good news. What I see is 
that we as human beings seem to enjoy arguing with each other and sowing fear and hate amongst each other. That we as human beings are finding it more difficult to sit down and have conversations with each other. And you know, I mourn that fact. I really mourn that we cannot be in conversation with others without having some sort of conflict or having some sort of hate speech come up. I mourn the fact that we have gotten to the point that it's either you're with us or you're against us. I can remember a few years ago, I believe it was when President, President Obama was wanting to sit down and have conversations with some of those people that were deemed our enemies. To sit down and understand where they were coming from. To sit down and get to know them a little better. And I don't know if you remember what he was told. He was told that if you do that, you're really naive. Because that's not the way we do things. We have to show power and might. We have to show them who's better than they are. Well, you can call me naive, but one of the things that I have found in my life is when I am struggling to understand somebody else who they are, why they, they react the way they do, why they believe in Jesus Christ the way they do. For me, it's let's sit down and talk. Let's get to know each other. Let's get to understand our differences without judging or condemning the other person. Maybe I am naive. But I am almost positive that every one of you in here at some time or another has been judged or condemned. Maybe you have been judged by somebody who just looks at you and says, nope, can't do it. Or maybe they have judged you because, well, you're a member of the ELCA and you know, they're not truly Lutheran anymore. Or maybe it's because you don't have money. Why do we, why do we want to judge and condemn each other? You know, God calls us to teach each other and, and asks us to call each other to repentance. And for me, being reminded that I am in need of repentance by someone is welcome. But being told and judged And sometimes being judged just by the way I take, the way they say it, doesn't, want, doesn't lead me to ask for forgiveness. It leads me, and maybe you too, to respond with anger. I always 
always marvel at the story of Joseph. Think about it. If there was any person who should have been angry over his treatment, who should have been more than willing to condemn and even have his brothers killed, it was Joseph, right? The things that were done to him are unbelievable. And yet we heard in the scripture today that he said, you know, forgive yourselves. Don't be angry at yourselves because what happened is God led me here. He could see God's hand at work in what was done. And I believe that as we continue through our lives, that those who have hurt us and we would like to see maybe staked on a cross at times, those who have hurt us, those who condemn us, those who ostracize us, I believe if we can forgive them and focus on how God is at work, on what and where God is leading us, that maybe we can slowly begin to, to fix what is wrong with the way that we are taught to deal with others. It's easy to say, well, I love that person. Yeah, I might not agree with them, but I love them. And deep down, you're still thinking, but they're wrong, so why, you know, until they can tell me they love me, why should we even, you know. It's not, forgiveness is letting go. And forgiveness, when we look at somebody and say, I forgive you, we're not doing it for them, we're doing it for us. Because when you can forgive and let go, you're the one that heals, and you're the one that grows in your faith. You know, I don't know where Christy is at today. It's um, almost 40 years later. That tells you how old I am. Once in a while, I think about her and some of the others that were on the swim team. I think of some of those who, from grade school all the way through high school, would bully others who would ostracize people. And I realize that in some ways that has limited how I continue to grow in my faith. But I will tell you that there is one gal, we went from kindergarten through the 12th grade together. A few years ago we were talking on Facebook and I just mentioned how, you know, her life and my life had been different. She was one of the popular kids, okay? Let's just say I wasn't, <laughs> which is fine with me. I love doing what I did in high school. Anyway, and she mentioned something about our differences of experience in school. And I told her, yeah, we did. We really did. And I said, you never had to put up with the bullying. And I will never forget what she replied. She said, Kelly, I am so sorry. If I ever bullied you, please forgive me. If I have ever 
done anything to you, please forgive me. That, I believe, is one of the first steps in mending our relationships, in moving forward, in creating a world that isn't built on fear and hate and condemnation, but it's built on love and communication with God in the middle, guiding our way as we go. So please, if I have done anything to any of you, forgive me. Amen. Let us join together in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it's risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just, have we, just as we have first received mercy. God of grace. Amen. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it's time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. 
bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness mend broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially those we name in our hearts now. God of grace. You bind us together into one family Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Just a reminder, if you'd like to give a special offering for the after prom or do the noisy offering for our Operation Christmas Child, um, the bucket for the noisy offerings in the back for special offering, you could put it in the offering plate. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with your heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you, look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And I will tell you, I can say that 100 times until I get up here, and then I forget it. <laughs> Let us join together in our sending hymn.
serve the Lord, remember the poor.